Howdy folks, it's Meandering Mike in the mid-afternoon in the Man Cave of Madness and we are doing our playthrough of Britannia. We're starting at the beginning of turn one. We are starting with the Romans because as we showed before, the players or the nations always go in this order. Which player will go will depend on the ownership of these guys. So the Romans are down here. The purple player and uh, here's also the same order here and as we mentioned in the how to play video the Romans get a major invasion which means they get to move and fight move and fight twice in the same turn so we're going to take a quick look here at uh, the implications of what that means, where they're going to want to attack. The first thing I always do is take a look at your victory conditions. All right, let me hold this up here. So there are turn five points. Uh, I mentioned that's called the Limus or Limus, not Limes. That's for the, the greatest extent of their occupation with fortifications at the end, either Roman forts or submission for these areas. The rest of their points are scored up through turn three. These are their occupation points. They happen in any turn, one, two, or three, where they take these provinces. So if you look at them, some of them are worth three points, Alban, Galadria, and Dunedin, and those are all way up there in Scotland. Uh, if you look here, Alban, Dwadria and Dunedin here. So if they can make it up by turn three, so that is, turn four don't count, that's too late, they can score those big points. Three each for those. The Pennons in York are with two each, which are much closer. The Pennons in York. All right. And then there's a lot of points for... Uh, one, Avalon, Bernicia, Cheshire, Cumbria, Devon, Downlands, Essex, Galloway, Huis, Kent, Lindsay, Lothian, March, North Mercia, South Mercia, Norfolk, Strathclyde, Suffolk, Sussex, and Wessex. And then a half points for Clyde, Cornwall, Diffid, Gwent, Gwynedd, and Powys. All those last things are <laughs> Wales. Not a lot of points for Wales. However, <laughs> you still want to hit the Welsh. Uh, strategically, this is important because green, if left alone, will be too powerful in the wrong, long run. So certainly you want to take things like Huis and Avalon, which are those two green areas here. So certainly you need to take those. Uh, and let's see, Devon and Cornwall, I believe, were on the. Oh, goodness, we're. This is the mysterious. All right. It's uh, mm, mm, mm. Okay, Avalon is up there, the beginning of the list of the, the one pointers. And so Devon's sort of in the middle, second line down. So Devon and Cornwall are here. Those are worth the point each. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about some strategy of optimizing where you land on the first turn. you got to remember, you have to stop if you enter Helens. Even the mighty Romans who can move, you know, three spaces per turn... Uh, they don't have any leaders, um, which allow you to move on through. So so invading, like, say, for example, in Devon, might sound like a bad idea, because you'd have to stop. You could invade in Devon and go to Avalon. Now, you could invade to Wessex, overrun and move on up this way. So landing in Cornwall is probably not a great idea. Uh, Kent and Sussex are sort of functionally equivalent. If you land in Kent... You could push on 
due to Essex. Well, Sussex, if you land in Sussex here, you can also push on to Essex, but you could go to the Downlands. Or Wessex, if you haven't already landed troops there. Now, so Sussex is a better choice than Kent. Now, you could elect to land in both. You could spread out across the whole thing, penetrate a little bit, and then try to go farther. Or you could try to beeline as fast as you can. Now, there are certain reasons why you may want to, for example, land here. You might think, ah, this isn't worth much points. They're not worth much points. I can fight my way up this way, hit a little bit here. The advantage of this is these crossing arrows. Remember, a crossing arrow, you can cross in your turn, but you have to start in this square. Okay? So if the Romans land here in the first turn of the major invasion, on their second turn of the major invasion, they could move in. And that means they could come to Diffid. The advantage of Diffid is it's clear terrain. It's easy to fight in. The Romans love fighting in clear terrain because they're only facing <laughs> normal guys, not a defense. They can hit on a four, five, or six. Whereas when they hit these guys in the Hillens, they only hit on a six. And the regular army shooting back. So they're on a sort of equal footing in that sense when they're attacking into the Hillens. So I'm going to put these little markers here as like a minor consideration and major consideration. Here is, you know, like we might want to land here because we could allow us to push into here on the next turn. Now, I need to move these back to make sure we've got, <laughs> getting in my way here. I'm at the edge of the board, that's part of the problem I'm doing this by hand right now. I suppose I could try to set this up here, but you're not gonna be able to see that real. Well. So, so bear with me right now, I'm gonna be, Doing the close-up view, and I'm hand-holding it. It's not going to be super steady. Um, but, so I'm going to keep a major consideration here, because this is flexible. Landing here, overrunning, coming up this way. Sussex is also good. As we said, you know, I'm going to make Kent minor consideration. So, they're starting in the English Channel. That's this zone down here. Now, other invasions by other guys, you know, Saxons, Danes, Angles, etc. They start in the sea area, and you can move inland. You have the option with those guys to move, like, one adjacent sea area and then go inland. Whereas the Romans and the Normans, they're limited. Each... There's a list of nations that have some limitations on where they convey. They can only go so far north or south or, or whatever. And this is the Roman invasion. They must land adjacent to the English Channel. Same thing with the Normans. Where some of these other guys that come in at the Phrygian and the Mercy, they can, you know, shift up one and over. And they have more, much bigger leeway of where they can end up landing. But Romans are here. So this I consider to be of higher consideration just for the fact that we might want to penetrate in here. This is a way that we can hurt the Welsh. Now, again, this is only worth like a half point, I believe. Diffid was on the list. It's worth points. There it is at that bottom row there. Powys, Gwynedd, Gwent, Diffid, Cornwall, Clyde. Uh, Cornwall is only worth a half point. The Wait. Was Cornwall on there twice? No, Avalon was worth one point. Yeah, Cornwall's only worth... Devon's up there. Devon is worth more. Okay, so Cornwall, not only is that, is Cornwall's only worth half a point. So Cornwall really is not good to take unless you're really trying to bash the heck out of the Welsh. Uh, but as far as the Romans, it would be much better to hit here, try to get stuff on this flank, so that once they've potentially made the Welsh submit, they could then roll up, keep going <laughs> up coast to try to get those high scoring points in Scotland. Now again, that's a long way away. You're probably not going to make the picks submit. You might. Um, but Dunedin and Albin are both Hillens terrain. Potentially you could lose a fair number of armies up there. But 
you may not care. Because one of the things is if you remember, the Romans get some reinforcements on turn uh, four and five, potentially, where if they have less than 10 uh, armies, they get to replace back up to 10. And the replacement guys show up in the English Channel. So potentially, you know, you might want to, like, oh, I've got, you know, 10 armies right now or 11 on a particular turn. Throw them off, do some higher odds attack, and, uh, you know, maybe go down, dip below 10 and get some replacements back. You're going to get them back. But if you're, like, if you've been invading and you only lost, like, one army, you start with 15, and you're still at 14 armies, it's like, well... You know, you still, you might not want to take a purposely risky attack because you don't necessarily want to lose five just so you can get one back for free. Um, maybe you do if you can conquer the entire board. Who knows? All right. So let's start using these considerations occupying these spots. Now, normally, each one of these clear terrain guys with two Romans, the amount required to overrun to be able to keep moving through is also decent odds. You know, uh, two two regular armies against one regular army is decent odds, but if you want to be really safe and taking place, you might want a three to one. Okay, I think I'm going to try here now to see how this is going to do here. Uh, well, let's see. Let's try that, pointing way over here. I don't know if that's a bad angle, but at least it's steadier. All right, so with two armies against one, the Romans needing a four, five, or six, the regular army only hitting back on a six, your odds of succeeding against two Romans against one regular in the clear is really high. Uh, I, could, I could figure out the math, but it might take me a little while in my head. I should have done it on paper. I'll, I'll do it at some other point and all. I'll mention that. So let's assume we're pushing up. Uh, I'm going to, for now, ignore Kent, knowing I can always hit it in the second major invasion. I can hit it in a subsequent turn. Remember, turn two, through turn three, you uh, can score those occupation points. Uh, Roman forts are, are, are placed in any province that the Romans take or walk through. If it's empty, they just have to walk through it. Um, you don't gain any more Roman forts uh, starting on turn five. I think only turned one through four. Uh, they leave at the beginning of turn six, and I don't think they can add new forts on turn five. So I may not even occupy this at all. But I might be, you know, shoo, Beeline north as fast as you can. All right, so. Penetrating here. Wessex. This here is Avalon, which is good points. Penetrating up to Huis. That was good points. Relatively good points. Okay, so that's the farthest we can go here. Now, here... From Essex, South Mercia and Suffolk are both sort of equally northward. This puts you next to anywhere that you can get from South Mercia. I mean, you've you've already got yourself into Huis. So I think Suffolk is, is considered more flexible here, invading up to Su Suffolk. And maybe we don't even take South Mercia right now. This can, in the second round, we could hit Norfolk. Now, Lindsay, this is a swamp. Remember, this is a Hillens. Uh, so we we may totally ignore that in the second turn of the major invasion. All right, so we have, that is one, two, three, four, five, six provinces. That's 12. We've got just three left. Now we have to decide, do we want to hit Devon? On the second turn of the major invasion, we could hit into Wales over here, Gwent, Unpowis. Uh, potentially would be able to hit March with an overrun and bring more guys up to, that's 
Clyde, I guess. Cluid, Clyde, C L W Y D, however you pronounce that in Welsh. Clyde, Cluid, something like that. Um, I, do, I really do like. Now, to make the Welsh submit, they must have fewer than five territories left. That means four or less. Uh, so they start with nine, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, boy, that's a lot of concentration on Wales. Um, I, I want to, well, see, we're going to get stuck here. Well, no, if we bring, if we, I'm thinking of putting three armies here is what I'm considering. Uh, potentially those can in the second major, if they don't go this way, or maybe go two here, one of these can keep going this way and leave the fort behind. Forts in the Hillens are great. What's one of the advantages of taking a Hillen is when you have your fort that you built, leaving it behind, that fort is only hit on a six. It's like a regular army that can't move, but defending in the Hillens means a six is needed to hit it. So one, one good advantage of taking the, the Hillens. Um, Part of the problem here, we have to think about where might, if we don't get lucky enough to kill a Bell J off right away, will they have places to retreat to? Hitting South Mercia here. Means any of these guys here potentially could retreat into the Downlands, which could be mm, problematic. Um, but I don't, well, it's the one thing, like we could go into the Downlands try to make sure that they can't retreat into the downlands. <sighs> trade-offs, trade-offs. Or do we penetrate more up the middle? Do we sort of take care of Kent in the backfield so we don't have to do that later? So that um, do, do the stuff as far back as we can so that everyone can advance. Now, turn two... Um, only the Irish are the invaders that start showing up. No, no, no. That's turn three. There are no other invaders on turn two. So they don't have to worry about their backfield getting hit. Starting on turn three, there's Irish that show up uh, in the Atlantic. Here, the Irish can hit here. Uh, and the Irish usually, uh, they, are, they are raiders. Um... Let's see. We could look at the Irish card. I don't want to spend too, too much time looking at other people's points. Uh, need to keep this <laughs> somewhat short here. It's supposed to be the major in the Roman invasion. Let's ignore it. Okay, Irish. Raiding. Any armies that destroy while raiding will get them a point. So on that very first turn, they might raid somewhere on a coast, like a an equal spot, but it was only attacking with one army. They'd attack somewhere there was one other army. Uh, they they probably would end up attacking a, a Welsh dude, maybe, or, or waiting until they have more Irish on the second turn to have better odds. Uh, mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. Normally, I don't throw much weight against the Welsh, maybe I should. So I'm going to this time. I'm going to say, okay, what if we do if we come here and put three armies here? I'm going to go ahead and follow my considerations and said, hey, these are definite good targets because my plan is to invade inland on the uh, the second half of the major invasion. Get into Diffid and see how this looks here for the chance to maybe make the Welsh submit early. And while I might not be able to get up deeply into uh, Pictland, uh, too, too often I've seen the Romans do relatively well point-wise, but not make the Welsh submit, and a lot of times Green ends up winning. Some people say, well, no, the red has the advantage of the blue. Every group differs. All right, so there we are. We've placed our armies this is the first half. 
Uh, the decision on where you want to attack is important in terms of being able to retreat or not. Um, so, for example, this Welsh right now, he would have no place to retreat out of Avalon. If the Romans missed completely, he couldn't retreat to here or here because the Roman armies are there right now. Um, uh, yeah. We're not, we're not going to assume that the Romans are also that the Welsh keep hitting and the Romans, they would have nowhere to retreat to because they haven't, uh, you know, like they haven't killed the coast. They couldn't retreat back to here. It's a do or die. The Romans are not going to do that. All right. So um, uh, let's see. I'm going to move the dice roller over here so you can see the dice roller. Is it more important to see the dice rolls or to see the battle where I'm pointing to? It's probably more important to see the battles where I'm pointing to, I would say. All right. Or I go by hand. Uh, yeah, I can, I, can, I can move it and show the dice after I roll. All right. So we are going to attack here. The black dice are going to be the Romans. They're attackers right now. So they need four fives or sixes. A six is needed for the regular army to hit back. Hit, miss. So, the Welsh unit dies. All right, I'm going to put it over here on their card right now. All right, so now that means if here, for example, the Romans technically, well, <laughs> no, technically the Romans have to retreat to where they came from. They, they have nowhere else to go. Technically they could go here as it being open, but technically they have to go back to where they came from they would have to go back into the English Channel. Um, invaders can retreat back to the sea they came from uh, if they have no other option, which normally that's the case with the way the rules are because you have to retreat back to where you attacked from. Um, all right, let's go ahead and see the result. We, we were uh, excited to, to do our advanced... Uh, into Devon with multiple troops. We're going with three armies, but they're needing sixes because it's in the Hillens. But the red guys, so they're, all these are needing sixes. All right. Who gets lucky? Miss, 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 miss. All right, so I'm going to say the Welsh are going to retreat. Uh, they're, they're, they're three times the odds of dying. and They want to try to hold out in Cornwall. I just say no. Cornwall is not worth as many points. I bother. Now, the question is, do they retreat to do it to protect the more valuable place that grows more population for them, but is more vulnerable? Or go to Gwent, which is, uh, I'm going to go to Gwent. I'm going to say, hey, staying alive. That's their goal. Okay. Well, right now we'll just keep, well, now let's let's finish pounding on the Welsh. So in Huis, we got two dice attacking. So again, we have our two black dice needing four, five, or six, one red dice needing a six. All right, they hit. This is the Roman Steamroller. All right. Uh, now we'll go down here and hit in Wessex. Same old, same old. Double whammy. All right. The Bell Giant. I'll put them over here. Um, Let's see, these guys could retreat to the Downlands or to Kent. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and hit here. This is Sussex, in case you want to know the, the names of these places. All right. Miss, miss, miss. All right. Uh, I'm going to... There's something about 
The Bell Jays, this opportunity to survive, maybe, and hold out, uh, gives them a chance to have some fun. You know, normally they get wiped out pretty bad. And if they decide to actually attack and try to get some points killing Romans, they, they'll, they'll die out. Uh, it's usually not worth their time to try to hang out to the very end of the game. Um, but we'll see. If, if they have opportunities to kill Romans and Roman forts, Roman forts are usually their way to go. Um, Essex. Okay, so we have casualties on both sides. This is our first Roman casualty. All right, I'm going to put them in France right now. You can't see that, but there, I'm just going to put them here in France. Um, and the Belgi guy died. Now, we have to remember that the Belgi are going to score points for that. So I will remember here at the end to score them up. All right. So Sussex, Essex, Suffolk. All right, two dice. Uh, that's a miss, but four of those are hits. All right, and well, that's everything. That's the first part of the major invasion. We're still on turn one. We're now turn one for the Romans, the very first nation to move. Uh, but major invasion, therefore, they get to go again. Now, one thing to note, there are some player positions that get major invasions um, after they've already had some stuff on the board, I think. I think one or two of those guys have potentially been able to land some dudes and end up having a major invasion. I think like the Danes or something like that. The major invasion happens after population growth. You only get population growth once. And then it comes the, the invasion movement combat phase. And so that major invasion happens outside of you don't get to grow twice. All right. So now let's remove these arrows and think about you know, what we want to do, what we want to accomplish, who we want to kill. Now, this is a case where some of these backfield guys, oh, Roman forts. Yes, let's. Make sure we give all our Roman forts, all these provinces that we occupied here, every single one of them, get a free Roman fort. you got to remember that these are 75-year turns, roughly. The first one's a little shorter. It is uh, only 67 years. That's from 43 to 110. Um, there is a major invasion happening in here. Uh... So it's like you're splitting that time in half or, or whatnot. Um, but many years are going by. So they've, they're have they occupying territories, they're building forts, they're moving on, they're conquering. So you know it's a, it's a little bit abstract with such a long, long game turns. But you get the idea. All right. So did we miss any? All right. So we could jump on Belge guy in Kent with just one army. We would hit him on a four, five, or six each round. He would only hit us on a six. So we have three times as much chance to hit him. Uh, do we want to take... Uh, I mean, obviously, if we have having two, we have a much better odds. And even if we lose one, we can still take it. Uh, we have to see where 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 we want to go with our troops. Now, obviously, over here, let's let's think about this first. Assuming we're not going to do Cornwall. That's going to be one of the ones that, okay, you guys can submit with. Uh, sort of weakens the the Welsh power of parts split here and parts here. So we're not going to go after Cornwall. We're going to go in here with at least two guys, I think. This guy could come up this way. Um, boy, hmm. do you want to hit these guys? You got to be careful. If you totally denude the backfield without taking these out, they can jump on a Roman fort, getting two guys against one. But then once they've done that, you've lured them out, and then you can kill them later. Um, so that's the thing. Yeah, it's, it's actually 
might be better to let him kill one guy <laughs> in a uh, against a fort, tempt him forward, and then uh, kill them after that. Uh, la, 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 la. So, four, one, two, three, four. So, we take one more. They can't submit. Once, once we've got that down, then on the the next guy, they can elect to submit. They don't have to. They could wait and see how the dice come out, etc. Um, let's see. So, Powies. Potentially Marsh going so, so assuming we're not going to want to attack this guy. Yeah. Um, 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 so. Yeah, let's let's assume. We'll leave him occupied. One, two, three. Moving into Powis. Um, so with two guys against one, the remaining six is we've got got the odds in our favor, but we could stumble and fail. We might want to throw it through. Oh, we did not put a Roman fort in Avalon. There's one we missed. Maybe someone you can put in the chat that hey, you missed Avalon. All right. Uh, 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 uh. LG coming back around. Decisions, decisions. How far do we go? Um, yeah, one, two. Three. So these guys are coming up. These guys can penetrate. One, two, three. One, two. Let's see, Powis, this device. Yeah, we want to make sure we take Powis. We're going to do Powis first. We we'll have five left. And then we'll do, wait, is that right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there's six there. We can take one, that puts him to five. The next one puts him to four. And then once we start attacking, he can submit. All right. So I am going to try to just hit one there. But we'll do two against here. Yeah, second turn. We'll try to slow it and then drive forward big time, not getting too far away. Depending on what the Belgies do, if we have enough armies here, we can come around and hit them wherever these guys, if they come out. Uh, so they could potentially yeah, jump on a number of forts. Um... So we could, like, spread out and do one here and one here. Uh, if we do that, like, if we jump on three different ones with one each, we can potentially take more territories. But the odds are, on one of those, we might fail. Because <laughs> if they roll a six and hit us and we have a 50-50 chance of missing them, bingo, we could fail to take it. So one's enough for now. We'll, we'll, we'll leave one at the low odds all right. They can potentially hit Suffolk. All right, there we go. So we got we got important battles here. I think we want to do this one first. Uh, then this one. And then when we go to do this, they, they could decide to submit or not. Or fight on. They might fight one more time. And the, the problem is, if they submit when they're bigger, that gives the Romans the advantage of having more uh, troops. Now, we actually want to 
make sure, let's see, <laughs> when they submit, do you immediately move out? I'm trying to remember. So you, you want to have, it's like we're going to want to do this fight here before so this guy's can move out. All right, let me check that really quick. Submission. You don't want to station the territory held by the nation. Must be immediately leave either to the areas from which they came or a wholly occupied Roman area. Not allowed to move forward. Uh, so this is like to where they came, but this is, so I, I think we need to do this one first. So actually, let's put a important arrow here. Well, we'll put the upside down one there. All right, so let's do that. So we're attacking the Brigantes, our first time fighting them. Two dice to hit on a four, five, or six. He's hitting back. He misses. We hit. The Brigantes lose the guy. We've taken this over. All right, so now three dice here. Versus one, but in the Hillens. So everybody's needing sixes on this one. Miss, 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 miss. All around, needing sixes. So this guy has to retreat to a friendly spot first. Um, I think he's going to probably want to spread out a little bit here now. Got to remember the stacking limits. Um, so it's normally two. Here you can have one in excess, but I think they want to spread out a little bit. Um, 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 um. All right, so let's go ahead and put these forts on as we're taking them, as a way to remember. And then we're going to be scoring for turn one all these occupation things here. All these things that we've taken. The Romans are going to get to score all those. All right. So we succeeded there. So now we've got our two armies in the clear. So, but we're needing our four, five, or six of the Romans. And the Welsh guy is hitting on a, just a six back. Miss, miss, miss. All right, this guy has nowhere to retreat to, right? Occupied, wait a minute, what did I do? <laughs> That's here. All right, there, not here. So they can actually retreat to here. Uh, are they going to have a problem? One, two, three, they submit, four, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, they could have, for the overpopulation rule, they could have that. This won't be overstacked. Right. So they're going to actually have three here. I think they're going to want to submit because they're going to have a decent size. So the the Romans do not have to allow population growth when a person submits. They may allow it. Um, if, for example, oh, Welsh, you know, go off and fight the Brigantes or something, they, they couldn't attack the Romans but they might fight the Irish or the whatever. So being strong with the thing will hurt the Irish. Um, all right, fort. Don't forget the fort. All right, so those fights have been done. What do we have left? We have the battle in North Mercia. We have... South Mercia, and we got our little fight here <laughs> in Kent. Oh, well, we got this one here. When we do say, How, here's this battle. One, two, three, four. That's less than five. They're going to submit. These guys have to leave. Okay, now remember, the Romans can have unlimited in the clear and up to four in a Hillens. So the fact that there's four guys here and three guys there, that's not a problem for the Romans. All right. So there's no fort here, but uh, for purposes of Lemus and occupation, 
the Romans get those points for forcing a submission. Uh, so the Belgians, they don't submit in this version. Later versions, the Belgians can submit, but they <laughs> they submit and then they unsubmit and have a rebellion. That's the Boudicca's rebellion. Um, so that's an extra interesting historical flavor and chrome in the later ones. All right, let's finish this up here. This is already at 40 minutes. So we're going to finish this major invasion and uh, call that a vid. Okay, let's do this little battle down here next. Let's... One Roman attacking, four, five, six. The Belge defending, needing a six. This is the Belge attack. They go, yeehaw, and miss and miss, but no order to retreat, so they stay and fight. Hit. All right, so the Belge... Didn't succeed. Okay, we do have to remember that they did kill it one Roman. All right, so that was here. Don't forget our fort there in Kent. It's a good deal. I, I like to try to keep the names of the provinces visible. And I tend to put the armies off on the top or the um, left or the bottom, and I tend to put forts on the right. But you know, whatever works for you, um, whatever works for you. All right. So, yeah, this was here. So this is pretty good for the Romans that they got a fair amount here to, to, to push on up um, on their normal turn two. So let's finish this off here. See, that would be an over. This guy would not be able to retreat to here. No, oh, no, there'll be the, the one the one stacking limit uh overstacking. That would be good. They might be in danger if they end up retreating in multiple spots of of population growth, which happens at the end of their turn. Um he could retreat here. He could retreat here. They can't stop that. Uh let's go ahead and do South Mercia next. So, two Roman armies needing four, five, or six. The Belgian needing a six. Uh, hit. All right, that was in South Mercia. And last battle, North Mercia. Same basic dice situation. Miss, 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 miss. This guy can retreat. Now, he has three provinces. He could support up to six. So, yeah, he's going to do that. So the Belge potentially could hold out for a while here with these armies that have retreated. So I don't know if maybe I should have sent more this way versus punching into here. This was nice during the very first turn, getting the Welsh to, to, to submit. Uh, the Welsh won't be able to score any points at all during uh, game turn four until the Romans are gone. Um, they didn't manage to kill any Roman armies or during that. They won't have a chance to kill any Roman forts because they've submitted. Uh, but they're going to survive strong. When the Romans leave, they're going to have a fair number of armies, okay? Uh, seven. So they start with nine. So they're gonna have seven armies when they when they're when they're activated again, and uh, that's that's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful. So I think long term green's looking good. Um, now you're playing multiplayer. You can whine a lot. Oh, I'm not getting any points in turn four and get sympathy and all that points. And so maybe someone might not pick on your Caledonians as green. They're way up there, right? Remember, green has those. Maybe blue will have mercy on you or something. Um, that's part of playing the other players in a multiplayer game. I don't get to do that quite as much in a solitaire game. I do try to put a little personality in each player, but... Let's, oh, it, 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 the forts, the forts. Don't remember, forget the forts. All right. So, yes. There we go. So, Romans are done. They lost one army only. So, my, my scenario talking about having 14 left so far, so good. Um... Now, I'm going to count up the points. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to end this here. It's, we're at 45-minute mark by the time I'm done. Uh, so I'm going to this up and out. Oh, boy. So 
this is what it looks like here, folks, after the end of the major meeting. The turn one of the Romans. The Belgae will get to go next with their five armies that are left. Rome will score all those points on their uh, turn chart for... Oh, let's see if I can move this without dropping everything. So these... Anytime up to end of turn three. So we'll count those up. And I'll, I'll put that in the description, how many points they scored. And we'll mention at the beginning of the, the next turn. But that was Britannia. The first part of the first turn. So this is a, is a long game, especially when you're playing it one player and talking yourself through all the strategy and all that stuff. It's going to be a, a long way to go. Yes, this does have a reputation to be a long game. Uh, it'll be a long series. But that's Meandering Mike in the Man Cave of Manus. How to invade Britain on a budget. We visited Wales. Belgi had a little fight against the Brigantes. Tiny little squabble over there. Uh, the Romans look... Somewhat strong, except hmm, the Belgians are going to be a little bit of trouble. We'll see what they do. They've got a lot of opportunity to potentially pick on some forts here. So we'll have to see what happens with that. All right. So Beandring Mike signing off from the Man Cave of Madness. Take care and ciao.